Android users, how much RAM do you think is enough? That is the question that we posted on our YouTube community post and most of you voted for 8 gigs of RAM. Okay, so before we do anything, I want you to do something first. I want you to head into the settings menu, find the build number of your device and tap on it until developer option is enabled. Then head back into your settings menu, find the developer option, go into the developer option and the first option there should be memory. Tap on it and then you'll be able to see how much RAM that your phone is actually using. Change that to one day for a larger sample size and then I want you to comment down below how much RAM that you actually use. For example, the Galaxy S22 Ultra here that I'm using has 12 gigs of RAM but the tool only reports that 11 gigs is available for me to use and that is mostly because the one gig of RAM is system reserve so that it can perform better, at least on paper. But this tool also reported that I'm only using 6.7 gigs. And I'm sorry to all Black Shark, Redmi, Poco or even Xiaomi users because this feature is not available on MIUI. And now I think that you can start to realize how much RAM that you actually will use on your device. And I've also asked a few friends to send me the screenshots and this is what I got. Okay, so let's ask the question. Does more RAM actually mean better performance? So over the past two or three years or so, smartphone manufacturers have been ramping up the amount of RAM on their phones. Only a few short years ago, four gigs of RAM was considered good, and now eight gigs of RAM was considered bare minimum. Then we have crazy phones like the ROG Phone 6 Pro with 18 gigs of RAM, and this amount of RAM is actually more than their own gaming laptops. The truth is, the ROG Phone 6 Pro doesn't even use that much RAM. Using the same tool that we mentioned earlier to monitor the RAM that this phone uses, I even tried opening a few games like Genshin Impact, Apex Legends and even COD Mobile, switch between all three of them and then hop back onto the app itself and we can see that a majority of those RAM goes unused. Keep in mind that the ROG Phone 6 Pro that I have here is mainly used for testing purposes and I'm not daily driving it. And if we went into the app once more and see which app takes up the most RAM, it's actually the Android OS itself taking large chunk of it. That is to be expected since the operating system has to handle everything. But the low RAM usage could be due to the ROG Phone 6's UI being so close to stock Android and there's no additional software or heavy skin like Samsung's One UI for example. I actually daily drive the Galaxy S22 Ultra since its release and the reason why I chose to use a Samsung phone is because they have included a lot of features like Samsung Pay, H-Panel and even Bixby routines that I use on a daily basis and some may call this bloatware but for me, I don't consider it to be bloatware since I actually use them on a daily basis. I also have a bunch of other apps installed and a lot of background apps running at the same time and guess what? The highest amount of RAM usage that I've seen on the Galaxy S22 Ultra is still less than 8 gigs of RAM. But the one question that I always get in our gaming test video is, what is the RAM that this phone has? Well, there seem to be an implication that more RAM means higher FPS, hence better performance. And my reply has always been, no, the amount of RAM doesn't matter. And you know what matters? The speed of your RAM, as in the LPDDR4, LPDDR5 or DDR5X. To answer the question why the speed of your RAM matters, we need to take a look at how a game works. Take a look at Genshin Impact for example. These kind of 3D games need two things to make the graphics look good. The shapes that we see in 3D games is actually made by a lot of polygons, triangles to be exact. The more polygons that an object has, the more accurate and less blocky it looks. Spheres will look rounder instead of being jaggy if more polygons are involved. Now, these triangles are calculated by your graphical processing unit, also known as GPU. If you have a more powerful GPU, then you can calculate a lot more polygons, hence the object will look sharper. 
Vox has a fantastic video about this topic and I'll link it at the bottom of this video in the description. And remember to subscribe to our channel while you're on the way. Also, certain games lets you enable wireframe as well so you can see the shapes that the GPU has drawn. But as you can see, the wireframe of a character's face is completely hollow. That is where the second part comes in and that is the textures. Have you ever seen images like this on the internet before? They are unfolded textures of a human head. You can draw a wireframe of a human's head and then wrap this texture on that polygon that you've drawn and then you get a head lookalike. Of course, in the case of Genshin Impact, the art style is not realistic but you still need a texture to go on top of the wireframe. That is where the speed of your RAM matters. Genshin Impact actually has quite a few graphical settings for us to select and one of them is the texture resolution. If we select low, then it uses low resolution textures and everyone looks fuzzy and pixelated. Low resolution means tiny file size, which means it's okay for slower phones that has slower RAM speed to load those textures. However, if we are to increase the texture resolution setting, then the texture file size becomes a lot larger and it requires a much higher memory bandwidth to cope with that. Games like COD Mobile even lets us select if we want to download HD texture packs or not and this is the reason why. Let me ask you something. Have you realized that when you're playing a game, when you move towards a certain object, it initially looks horrendous and then suddenly it becomes nice again? Well, that is due to texture loading speed actually. And in this case, you do need more RAM. The more commonly used textures are usually loaded into the RAM for faster loading because whatever storage chip that you have, UFS 4.0 or UFS 3.1 or whatever, is not going to be as fast as dedicated RAM. But as what we've shown here, the amount of RAM used is usually less than 8 gigs of RAM even when we are playing games like Genshin Impact at the highest graphical settings. To further expand on the topic of RAM is faster than whatever storage chip that you have, we need to talk about virtual RAM or RAM expansion or whatever the feature is called by your brand. You know the feature where they add more RAM to your phone? Yeah, that feature. The virtual RAM is engaged when your system's dedicated RAM is full, hence the operating system uses a small part of your internal storage as your RAM. As mentioned earlier, your storage chip is always going to be slower than your RAM, hence if you are ever going to use that virtual RAM, your performance is not going to be similar. Going back to the tool yet again, we can actually tap on each individual app to see how much RAM that is actually allocated for that app to use. Now, I'm not an Android app developer, but here is what I know. Each app opens up like a VM or virtual machine, hence the system has to allocate a fixed amount of RAM for that app to use, and that app cannot use more than that allocated amount. So to answer the original question of this video, does more RAM means better performance? Nope. Even big games like Genshin Impact are only allocated 2.1 gigs of RAM and that's everything that you get. I'd say that once you have about 6 gigs of RAM then you're in pretty good shape. 8 gigs is enough but if you want anything more then it's excessive and you guys were right in terms of voting in our YouTube community post. Will the amount of RAM usage increase in the future versions of Android? Maybe but only when it's necessary. Like in Samsung DeX, when we have even more apps open concurrently, then the amount of RAM needed is going to increase. I do hope that developers don't just get lazy and gobble up all the RAM available and don't optimize their apps or operating system. Look at iPhones with their 4 gigs and 6 gigs of RAM. Optimization plays a very big role. So in summary, we have 3 points for you to take away. Number 1. You don't need a lot of RAM. 6 gigs is sufficient, 8 gigs is comfortable, and 12 gigs is excessive and it will only be useful in certain cases. 16 gigs is ridiculous and 18 gigs on the ROG Phone 6 Pro is a total waste. Number 2, you don't need to kill your apps to quote unquote speed up your Android phone. In fact, it's actually detrimental to your battery life. Each time you close the app and then to open again, you will require some processing power to initialize the app once more. And number 3, Bigger RAM capacities beyond 8 gigs of RAM is mostly marketing selling point and manufacturers can compare their private part size. So that's it. I hope you get an idea on how much RAM you, you actually need on your phone. Like what we mentioned, 8 gigs is pretty much what 99% of everyone needs. 12 gigs is real nice to have but I still don't think that you need that much. 16 gigs and 18 gigs, nah. 
that's a total waste of time and money and yeah do subscribe to this channel because we spend a lot of time researching all these kind of topics and we we'll see you guys in the next video